Hey there, and welcome to my channel, The Paper Bag Investor. Today I want to ask the question, is Tesla stock overvalued? Many people think it's overvalued, many people will tell you it's overvalued, and specifically I want to look at the price to earnings ratio of Tesla, talk about that, and compare it to the price to earnings ratio, PE ratio of Amazon over the last seven years, eight years. So without further ado, let's get into it. And before we go much further, I just want to make it absolutely clear that I am not a personal financial advisor. I'm just a guy with a paper bag on his head who really loves investing and thinking about the future. And if you love investing and thinking about the future too, I encourage you, hit that subscribe button down below um, and follow along and become a better investor with me. With this investing channel, I'm not going to be throwing dozens of different stock ideas or possibilities or growth stocks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, at your direction. I'm really looking for what are the very, very best investments because if you can find the very, very best investments and you concentrate your investments, your, your, your portfolio into those, and you find these generational companies, then you can have really huge, massive returns over time. It's one thing, it's easy to actually throw out, you know, a dozen different possibly good companies and just invest in all of them. It's much harder to try and pick the very top few select companies that are really going to change the world and deliver massive value to their shareholders over the long term. And that's what this channel is really about. That's that's my investing philosophy in a nutshell. Really look for those kind of companies and invest heavily in them. So if you're into that, again, please hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. But today we're talking about Tesla. Is it overvalued? If you ask many people, so-called financial advisors, financial analysts, uh, random people who just sort of follow the stock market, they will tell you that Tesla is way overvalued and they'll tell you that it has a PE ratio that was over a thousand and now is in the seven to 800 range. And if you're new to investing and you're wondering what is a PE ratio or a price to earnings ratio, here's what it is in a nutshell. It's the price per share of the company divided by the E, the earnings per share over the last trailing 12 months. So the last four quarterly results what were their earnings per share? So again, it's the price divided by those 12 months of earnings. So if you have a completely stable company like a utility company that has very, very concrete, stable expenses and costs and also it's very stable income, they might have, say they have a PE of 10. It means you're paying 10 times per share what it earns per share in a year. Or in other words, uh, it, it returns about 10% of what you're paying in a given year. So seemingly the higher the PE ratio just means that the company is more expensive or you can look at it that investors are willing to pay more for that company. So this is a really quick argument people make against Tesla and say why there's no way you should buy Tesla because it has a PE of you know, 700, 800, 1,000. It literally means if the company, nothing changed at all in the company going forward and it just stayed at a static state, it would take say 800 years to pay off your investment, which is obviously a very, very bad investment. But I find that people who make this argument really don't understand growth companies and the nature of growth company stocks and the nature of a PE ratio and why it's a very limited piece of information. Because a P.E. ratio, it really only looks at the last 12 months. It looks backwards in time. When the stock, the price of a stock or the price of any company or investment is really what it should be is what you're willing to pay for all the future cash flows that are coming. Because, you know, if you buy a company, you're not buying what it did 12 months ago. You're buying it what is what it is. You're buying a company for what it's going to do 12 months in the future, two years in the future, five years in the future, 10 years in the future. That's what actually matters. So the PE ratio right away is is kind of it's a useful metric, but it's kind of flawed because it only looks backwards 12 months in time. And for a high growth company like Tesla that's growing exponentially, uh, it's very, very futile to really look at the PE ratio or try and compare the PE ratio. Because the company is actually advancing and growing at an exponential rate, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years in the future could be completely different than what happened in the past 12 months' time. And I want to bring up an example of Amazon and look at Amazon's PE ratio over the last seven years. So I'm going to bring up a chart for this. And this is on a website called macrotrends.net. And I've looked up the company Amazon. 
If you scroll down, it's got the stock price, the earnings per share over time, each dot or each bar represents one quarter, and then I have the P-E ratio over time. And if you look back in history, um, Amazon, an example of a huge growth company that's, that's really revolutionized the whole retail business and flipped the whole retail business model on its head. At one point in time, they actually traded, if you look back to 2012, they had a P-E ratio of over 3,600. <laughs> And then there was zero because they, their last 12 months would not have been profitable at that time. Uh, and then, you know, which really they say PE of zero, but really it should be almost PE of infinity when you're not profitable um, because the, the earnings side is zero, but whatever. And then move forward, you have, you know, a couple quarters later, you have a PE ratio of over 1,000 and then 675, 525. Uh, 830, again, we're at that PE of zero, or maybe you could call it infinity, and then 700, 500. So there's qu actually quite a few quarters, like a number of years, you have a very high PE ratio. The company's not earning really a lot of money per share. The stock price is kind of the similar area, increasing slowly over time. But it's just a great example of a growth company that just exploded because if you look at the share price back when it's at 3000 p of 3000 we had about $250 a share and that was in 2012 September sort of fall 2012 around then so if we fast forward 8 years into the future we're at a share price of over $3000 a share so that let me if I do my math um that is about a 12x increase over 8 years that's a very 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 good return and if you had just looked at the p ratio of amazon back in the day and said uh, even before this huge spike because the earnings went down it spiked up dramatically but even before that um you had p's high p ratios of 160 280 uh you might have said or traditional analysts might have said oh amazon's too expensive don't bother buying Amazon. You're going to waste your money with this stock. And unfortunately, if you had listened to these kind of analysts back then, you just would have thought, well, Amazon's too expensive. I can't buy it. That's actually what I did. I didn't take my investing quite as seriously as enough as I do now, eight, nine, ten years ago, when around the time I was starting investing. And I didn't buy Amazon because a lot of investors said it's too expensive. Sure, the revenues are growing. They're growing rapidly, but they're not making enough money per share to really justify their share price. And they're too expensive and just too risky of a company. But what those investors didn't understand is that this, this P ratio really is just looking back at a, just a simple 12-month window. And when you're talking about a company like Amazon and you're really revolutionizing a whole industry, a whole retail sales industry with a, a new service of being able to buy products online, buy more products that are available, there are more products than are available, you know, in a traditional store because it's an online store and then have them shipped to your house in a, you know, in a day, two days or, or just a few days time. It's just a massive fundamental shift in the way we even buy things. And people didn't understand that that shift was happening and that the value that could bring it into a company like Amazon and to the shareholders and why even at a P-E ratio of whatever the number was, 3,000, uh, you know, zero or over 1,000, it still was deeply, deeply undervalued at these prices. Now, I'm also going to bring up Tesla stock on macrotrends.net and just look at their P-E ratio over time. So again, they they actually had a PE ratio of zero, or you might argue infinity, because they had no uh, gap net earnings uh, for most of their history, just until recently. For you know, this is trailing twelve months, and trailing twelve month net earning per share, and now it's spike is starting to grow, and they have a PE of five hundred. They were over a thousand at this point, and well, they released earnings. They were eight hundred. Uh, 783. So again, if you just look at this metric, you're really not understanding the whole picture that said uh, you, you might just think, wow, this company's way too expensive. But that, that's only really valid if you're looking at a static company in time. And for Tesla, the, their, their, earn, their earnings, their revenue, their sales are growing at a massive exponential rate and will continue to grow at an exponential rate, I think, for the next 10 years plus. And to say that they're overvalued at this price is really, really poor simplistic analysis because you're, you're just looking at this tiny little window of time looking backwards when you really need to be looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years out into the future. 
and, and trying to evaluate what could the company be worth in 10 years time if the Tesla is selling 20 million vehicles per year? What could the company be worth in 10 years time if they have working robo taxis that are generating $30,000 a year in income? What is the company worth then? And then go backwards to today's share price. And if you do some of that math, you look at some of the, the, the sort of numbers, you'll see that I, I think Tesla is extremely undervalued at the current price. Of course, the future has to pan out as I see it panning out. And I, I think it will for Tesla just because they're fundamentally shifting this whole uh, transportation industry in a similar way that Amazon has disrupted a entire retail industry. So anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, what are your thoughts on Tesla? Do you think it's overvalued, undervalued? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Those are, but again, those are some of my thoughts. Thank you guys um, so much for watching. If you got value out of this video, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Please hit that thumbs up. Really helps me out and helps my channel grow. So appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.